So let me guess, you went to a convention and no one noticed your awesome cosplay. And all the photographers and all the sexy girls flocked to a chat with a sick ass glowing costume. Well, don't worry, because after today's video, you'll be one step closer to lighting up every room you walk into. Today we'll be looking at light emitting diodes, also known as LEDs nuts. <laughs> Got <he. laughs> Seriously though, LEDs are a nice, simple and a cheap way to light up any prop or a costume. The logo behind me, for example, is also backlit by LEDs, so the information here in this video is not only limited to cosplay. There are many different kinds of LEDs, and some are more suitable for your project than others. Most people are aware of either these tiny LEDs with little legs, or the square ones. They're called SMD LEDs, which stands for Surface Mount Device. That means that they're meant to be soldered onto something, like an LED strip or a print circuit board. But unfortunately, that's where the simplicity sort of ends, because there are many varieties and categories of LEDs, so maybe let's start with the simplest one and move up the food chain. First up, plain LED. The single LED is probably the easiest way to make a prop light up. These are pretty much always rated for 3 volts, so that means that you don't need to have any resistors or anything to power them off of a simple battery. And that is why usually most people start with these, because they're just so simple to use. Toss in a battery holder for convenience and uh, boom, you're in business. The show business. Some of these are bigger than others, but they still only provide a single spot of light. So if you need a big area illuminated, um, they might not be the best option. Second, single color LED strip. Ring, 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 ring. Now this is the meat and potatoes of lighting. They're as simple as to use as single LEDs, but can provide way more light. They're made up of groups of SMD LEDs, you remember the surface mount ones from before? Uh, and they're just soldered to a common base. Single color LED strips have only two contacts, just like individual LEDs, but since they're wired up in groups, they require more power. Usually they need from 9 to 12 volts, which is multiple times the 3 volts we had for the individual LED, but um, it's still pretty okay because you can get 9 volt batteries and they'll work fine. LED strips come in different grades of waterproofing, and even though I don't go swimming with my props or costumes, I still buy the waterproof variety when I can. There's a thin transparent layer of plastic on top of the LEDs that makes it a bit more resilient to twisting and bending and other mechanical damage, and it just prolongs the life of the LED strip. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're buying supplies. Third, analog RGB strip. See how flimsy it is? Because it's not waterproof, like me. I never had a drink of water in my life. If the single color LED strips are the meat and potatoes of lighting, then this is definitely a nice juicy steak. These are a bit more pricey than single color LED strips, but they also open a lot of possibilities. You'll usually see and use analog RGB strips in projects that either require um, color shifting, you know, changing from one color to another, or require a particular color of backlight that single LED strips don't come in. RGB LED is actually a package of LEDs. Red, green and blue in a single unit. Analog RGB strips have a few more connectors than a single color LED strip one for each color. To really unlock their potential, you'll need to use a controller. Controllers supply different voltage to different color channels, and that's how they achieve different colors. To blend these red, green, and blue sub-LEDs, you can use an Arduino, but luckily there's plenty of RGB strip controllers out there that require no programming skills, they're just plug and play. And of course, if you blast all channels at 100%, you will get white light. But if you require only white light, might as well go with a single color white LED strip anyway. Instead of powering three colored LEDs to achieve white light, you might as well use a cheaper and simpler option. The LED strips come in different densities. There's like 30 per meter, 60 per meter, 144 per meter. When shopping around, make sure that you're paying for what you think you're getting, because some sellers are playing dirty and writing down only the total number of LEDs per entire strip rather than per meter, so they can send you over 2 meters of 30 LEDs each and be like, haha, well you got your 60 LEDs, what are you complaining about? But they know what they're doing, so, you know, Read into the description and pay attention. Fourth, digital LEDs. I know that these are really the reason you're here for. The digital LEDs is the hot new girl in class and everyone's going crazy about them nowadays. Although expensive and way more tricky to work with, these can be extremely eye-catching. So what makes a digital LED digital? Beneath each of these digital LEDs, there's a tiny microchip that can understand these special commands sent from a microcontroller. You'll notice that instead of having a wire for each color channel, digital LEDs have a single wire for information. So instead of changing color for all of the LEDs at once, you can specify which LED in particular will change into what. 
and this is what makes digital LEDs so powerful. By sending different commands over time, you can make them do anime. Animations, I mean, you can make them do animations. <laughs> Whew, and boy can you. Since these basically work like a line of pixels on your computer screen, the sky's the limit. And who says you need to stick to a single row? You can make entire grids of these. But like with anything good, there's a downside to these LEDs. You definitely will need a microcontroller to generate the right signals. And depending on your goals, some coding knowledge will be required. Digital LEDs are strictly 5 volts. Since they have all those tiny sensitive microchips inside them, I advise you not to exceed that. Fortunately, 5 volts is still a good number to work with because USB power banks supply 5 volts and those you can find anywhere. Fifth, the exotics. RGBW. This is a very niche thing and I'm just mentioning it so you'll be aware that it exists. Remember when I mentioned that it's very inefficient to generate white light with an RGB strip? You can work around this limitation by adding a white LED to the strip. And that's what RGBW stands for. Red, green, blue and white. Strips like these sometimes go by the name of RGB cold white or RGB warm white. Warm white means that the dedicated LED is more towards orange spectrum, while cold white means that it's a bit more bluish. <laughs> this particular absolute mad lad of a LED strip actually comes with both cold white and warm white LEDs. But RGB CWWW strips are actually a pretty rare sight, so I don't expect you to run into any anytime soon. So there you have it, most common types of LEDs. I hope now you can make a better informed decision on which kind to use for your next project. I'll be releasing a few more videos in this series about LEDs, where we'll dive deeper into topics like um, how to calculate power requirements or how to effectively diffuse LEDs, and of course, the Uber exotics. So if you think it's something for you, uh, maybe consider subscribing or leaving thumbs up on this video, um, and if not, uh, well, maybe I'll earn it next time, no worries. Also, if you're curious how I made this flexible uh, LED panel for video lighting and makeup or other cool projects like this RGB accent light for photo shoots, um, I think you would enjoy joining us on Twitch TV slash Zibertas where I host my live crafting stream. We have a cool community going on there and sometimes I have guests, but uh, more often than not it's just me crafting, answering questions and, uh, you know, learning together with you guys. So if that sounds interesting, maybe check it out, there's a link in the description. Anyways. See you in the next one. <sighs> Wait a second, it takes a minute.